In my last video, I made an infinity mirror with white lights. Today I'm going to make one with colorful lights, using an LED strip with addressable LEDs. I will be following a lot of the same steps from my last video, so I'm not going to go into much detail with those steps, and focus more on what I'm going to be doing different on this one. I recommend watching my previous video to get more information on those steps. This infinity mirror is going to be bigger than my last one. It's going to have 12 sides, and for each side I measured out 3 and 3 8 inches and cut them at a 15 degree angle. I sand the cut edges smooth, then glue them together with wood glue. I only glued together two pieces at a time and let them set for half an hour before gluing each segment together. For this infinity mirror, I'm going to attach the LED strip differently than I did in my last one. I cut the LED strips at 60 LEDs. I want there to be 5 LEDs on each side, so I put a mark in the middle of each side. I start with the third LED and attach it at the first middle mark. After that, I count out 5 more LEDs and align that one with the next middle mark. I attach the LED strip to the frame at only that LED. I continue attaching each fifth LED to the middle mark of each side. The LED strip does not come into contact with most of the frame, so to make sure the LED strip doesn't come off, I put hot glue between the strip and the frame in the gaps at the corners. Some addressable LED strips have three contact points and some have four. Mine has three. They also have a first and a last LED. The first LED has arrows pointing away from it towards the next LED. This is where you want to solder the wires that attach to your controller. I lift up the first LED so that I can drill a hole in the frame to pass the wires through. I'm going to solder this 3-wire female connector to the LED strip. It will be able to connect directly to the controller that I have. I solder the white wire to ground, the red to 5 volt positive, and the green to the middle data connection. Next I prepare the mirrors for this infinity mirror. I didn't record video of me doing this, but it's the same process that I did in my last video so I'm just going to show that footage instead. For this infinity mirror, I'm going to put all the parts together differently than I did the last time. I'm still taking the same steps to make the holes in the plexiglass and the frame, but with six holes this time instead of the four that I did last time. I also built an outer frame that will give the final project a better appearance. Next I get a quarter inch dowel and cut off six pieces, each one inch long, that I'll use to hold all the layers together.
I drill two holes through the outer frame and insert pieces of dowel through them. This will help keep both frames aligned while I drill the other holes. As I drill each hole, I insert one of the pieces of dowels. I want to glue the dowels to the outer frame, but not to the inner frame. As you can see, the dowels go through both frames right now, but they mess up the pattern on the outer frame. I push each of the dowels down below the surface of the outer frame, but not all of the way out. I put some glue into the hole, then I move and twist the dowel, trying to get the glue to cover as much of the contacting surface as I can. But when it's done, I don't want the dowel to extend past the surface. When I get the dowel positioned where I want it, I clean up the excess wood glue. After I do this with all six dowels, I let the glue dry completely. After the glue dried, I removed the inner frame and used wood filler to fill the outer part of the holes in the outer frame. The wood filler that I used is pink when it's first applied and turns tan when it dries. I used extra so that I can sand it down to match the pattern of the frame. I gently sand down the dry wood filler until it is level and smooth with the surface of the frame. After I finished sanding all six spots, I added some extra filler to a few of them that I needed to touch up and did the same thing again. When I was satisfied with the results, I painted the frame. Now I'm getting a piece of black foam board and trace out the inner frame onto it, then I'll cut it out. I align the frame with it and use the drill bit to mark where I need to put the holes for it. This piece of foam board is going to be the back layer of the infinity mirror. I start putting the layers together. I'm going to hold them together with some screws and fender washers. The screws are going to go into the dowels, so I need to drill a pilot hole into each of them. After each of the holes are drilled, I put the foam board on the back and screw it into place. Everything looked good, so now I take it back apart and remove the final layer of protective film from both pieces of plexiglass. You've probably noticed a few times where I have the letter B written on the two frames. I did this for a good reason. When I drilled the holes, I did not measure where I was putting them so I needed a way to keep all of the parts positioned correctly so that I wouldn't have to figure it out each time I put them all together. It's harder to see, but that mark is also written on the two pieces of plexiglass and the foam board. Now there's just one thing left to do, and that is to give me a way to hang it on the wall. Once I get it all back together, I remove one of the screws from the back. I take a soda can tab and screw that onto the back. I bend it out slightly to make it easier to hang. Now it's time to test it. I connect my LED controller to the infinity mirror, then connect that to my 5 volt power supply and turn it on. Make sure you choose a controller and power supply that matches the voltage that your LED strip needs.
now that it's all working, I have it hanging on the wall next to my TV, but technically it's not completely finished yet. I have more plans with this infinity mirror, and the addressable LEDs will give me a lot of options for custom displays. If there are any tips or ideas that you have, feel free to leave a comment.